Hey everyone, welcome back. It's the screencast. It's Mass You Should Know. It's we're back from a hiatus after our testing cycle. And we're gonna finish our unit on statistical measures. Um, we've been talking about things like measure of center. And when we think about measure of center, we think of averages. We think of things like mean, median, and mode. And today we're gonna be taking a look at line plot, also known as dot plot, a way to take a set of data and um, kind of display them in a meaningful way. So let's, first of all, let's take a look at what we went over in class. Here's some data, the number of pets in this class, right over here. And when I just look at it right now, I can see a whole bunch of zeros, a whole bunch of ones, a whole bunch of twos, a whole bunch of threes, a whole bunch of, ones. but it really doesn't mean much to me. Let's, let's make sense out of it. What should we do first? Well, first we should make a number line. And we're gonna label it since our data is between the numbers zero and four, zero through four. Then for each data, piece of data, I'm gonna put a little X over whatever the number is that we're representing. For example, if I took say this zero, I would put an X there and that's done for us. Here's another zero as an X. There's a zero, there's an X, yes. And there's one last zero, there it is. And we do that for each one of the numbers. Then we take a look at the data and we can say, wow, I think I see a mode there. Two is the most popular, that's our peak data. Also, we talked a little bit today about whether something is symmetric or not. Symmetric means kind of equal on both sides. I would say our data in this case is approaching symmetric. However, it seems that we have a few more people on the left-hand side there, the, the lower end of the zeros and the ones that have pets or don't have pets, I guess, in this case, uh, as opposed to on the other side. So that's one thing we covered today. That's dot, plot, and uh, that's a, a, a one way to represent numbers. Um, let's see here. Let me get rid of this. And we also talked about today histograms. And a histogram, if you're taking a look at this and through slightly older eyes, just like mine, you might look at it and say, isn't this a, a bar graph? And I might have to agree with you up to a certain point. We're getting there. Histogram, okay. All right, there's one. Um, and in with this histo histogram, the bars uh, go, they go vertically, they go up. Whereas to me, I think a bar graph goes horizontally. So the bars would go in that direction. So that might be the subtle difference. Uh, we talked uh, about intervals today and our x-axis in this case has intervals, in this case, 25 to 4, 49.99, 50 to 74, 99, and so on. And our measurement is number of concerts. One thing we did recognize today in class was this title, is completely not correct. It has nothing to do with what is on our graph. Um, so if I were to give that a title, what would it be? And let's think about that. It looks like we're looking at average prices for tickets. That's what it says down here on our x-axis. On our y, it says the number of concerts. So I would probably think it would be something more like cost of ticket prices per concert or something like that. How do I read this chart? Okay, if I were to take a look at the data just as it is presented here, there's a lot more, in this case there's nine, right there, nine concerts that cost between $25 and $49.95. Uh, here's an interesting one. The interval of 125 to $149.99 has zero number of concerts, whereas this might be even more interesting uh, considering the, the cost of ticket prices these days. There's one concert, how do I know it's one? Well, um, it's about that level right there, which would be between zero and one, which is, or excuse me, zero and two, which is one, between $150 and $174.99 for one ticket. That's a lot of moolah. Let's see if there's another histogram here. Oh, okay, how to change raw data to histogram. Step one, I think would be make a frequency chart, but we're gonna be doing that in our class. Make a little tallies to compile our um, our data. We see intervals here that are prescribed. Um, here's one, 100 to 149, 150 to 189, or 99, 200, and so forth. And the tally marks just represent the number of times that number occurs, and then 
we count up the tallies. That's called our frequency. What would that histogram look like? Okay, there we go. How about we put some bars on there? And last but not least, there is our histogram. Um, looking if that's symmetrical or not, I guess not, not at all. Um, one thing that I look at and I see immediately is that that those numbers in the middle, let's see if I can make that a little bit bigger, even a little bit bigger yet. Yes, right here from 200 to 248 or 249. That happened eight times, which makes it the biggest number. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what we did today in math class. We'll be going back over that again tomorrow. Also, we'll be making our own with our project. We're going to do our school-wide project. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the maths you should know.